This is a stock analysis blitz for Fresnillo. Fresnillo are a Mexican silver and gold miner listed both on the FTSE 100 and also the BMV, that's the Mexican Stock Exchange. Before I start, please remember I do these videos just for fun as a hobby and always speak to a qualified financial advisor before making any investment decision. So Fresnillo own eight gold and silver mines in Mexico. We can see them here listed in this map. You can see that 43% of their revenues in 2022 came from gold and 42% from silver, with some coming in from zinc and lead as well. So they're as much a silver company as a gold company. Here we can see their mines listed in their annual report. And they also have four advanced exploration projects. I've plotted their gold production and also their silver production. And what we see is for their gold production, actually only one mine, the Herodura mine, accounts for the majority really of their gold production. The trend is actually a bit of a negative one. There's been a decline in their production of gold over the last five years. But two of their advanced exploration projects, uh, Orizivo and Rodeo, these are going to be gold mines. Uh, we can see here that actually they should be online. The color codes here mean that red is when that mine should be online for about 2027. So not too long, actually. So although a bit of a negative trend for their gold production, it should stabilize a bit in the coming years. And then their silver production is mostly San Julian, Saucito, and the Fresnillo projects. And uh, here, actually, they've got stable production. And this new project, Juana Cipio, this project uh, should be boosting their silver production. So overall, things will look quite good there. They also have a lot of exploration projects in Mexico and also in Peru and Chile. Now, I recently did videos on Endeavour Mining and also Sentiment. And what's interesting is if you look at the uh, gold production of Sentiment, that was actually half what Fresnillo are producing. So in terms of gold, they're producing more gold than uh, some of their rivals on the FTSE. Plus, they have uh, all of this silver as well. And the sheer scale of Fresnillo is very impressive. And to put that into context, I was looking at some of these other companies and they were talking about 20,000 metre drills. Well, Fresnillo actually put in about a million metres of exploration drills in 2022. So this is actually a very large organisation of impressive scale. And I do like it how they're doing their own exploration themselves rather than buying in stuff at a later stage. I've plotted their market cap here up against their net assets, and you see it's just overpriced to book to one to one. So, like with all of the, uh, so like with all of the other stocks, uh, I mean, here's uh, Sentiment and here's Endeavour. We find that the the entire gold sector is seem does seem to be undervalued, as as, as it's been seen out of fashion with the investors in recent years. And then when we look at the reserves, and I've split the reserves into the gold and the uh, silver, we see that it matches up very well. I mean, the, the share price does look cheap against their reserves. And then obviously the resources, which include a lot of their exploration projects and things, um, there's an there's a immense upside from their market cap to their resources. I've here got their realized gold price for 2022 and silver price. And then the black line here, that's the all-in sustaining cash cost for their gold and silver mining. And actually, compared with some of their competitors, it's a bit of a tight margin here. So it's costing them more to extract their gold than their competitors. Now, it was actually quite hard to work out what their overall in, all in sustaining cash cost was because they don't actually give a value overall. They gave a breakdown for each mine, 
and for them they'll they'll give it for gold if it's a gold mine or silver if it's a silver mine so i don't know if it's costing this much for the gold does that mean the silver comes in for free or it, it's not clear so i just used the heredura number for the gold and i use the three most important mines to work out for silver so there's there is a, a slight blind spot there in terms of visualizing their margins but the general impression is that they are running um they're not actually making that great a margin compared with their competitors looking at the history and i like they've got a fairly conservative dividend policy they just pay out between 30 and 50 percent of their profits as dividends every year and this results at a 2023 dividend if calculated from the current share price of about one percent so not all that great dividend but i kind of like their cautious strategy actually in terms of news flow and uh, we see um, you know a sagging share price and the only news flow was construction of the joanna cpo mine um, and then it achieved commercial start only three years later. And they also got a new CEO in. So looking at their share price and comparing it to the gold and silver price, and we see that as with all the other gold stocks I've looked at, they do seem to be trading at a discount to the actual change in gold price. And in this case, also the silver price now remember that the reason i'm looking at these gold stocks is because the price of gold um, has gone through this giant cup and handle formation and technically i think it could be worth a speculative bet so the idea is, is that by investing in with these gold stocks you get a nice kind of leverage play on the uh the, what you think is going to happen technically to the price of gold here i've got the uh, gold price which is the uh, the chart and then the orange here that's the silver price and it's interesting to go all the way back uh, to after when the uh, bretton woods agreement ended and then gold was effectively no longer the, the the us dollar was no longer pegged to the price of gold the gold price went through this price discovery so actually, if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see I do a, a video here on gold. So take a look at that when I explain all this in more detail. But following this price discovery phase, the price of gold didn't really do anything for decades. And then it shot up a lot in um, around the time, well, from really the noughties onwards, um, and particularly when we had the credit crisis and then it's formed this uh, giant cup and handle formation and actually expanding a bit on that video i did i'm starting to see that this isn't uh, just trends that repeats itself of gold going up every so many decades i think this is a difference in behavior now to uh, historically i think that this initial pump was just price discovery after gold was released from the value of the us dollar and then here actually uh, this period of history is when we really saw the new Keynesian economics coming to force and my back my base theory now is that this money printing is going to just continue continue and perhaps even you know when we see ai coming in and stuff it might, might even mutate into full-blown modern monetary theory. But I think that we're going to be seeing a lot more printing of US dollars, a lot, of, a lot more M3 money supply. And this is, a, this is a justification for me for why we could see the price of gold increase, thus fulfilling the prophecy of this giant cup and handle formation. Now, what's interesting is uh, silver, historically, when gold went up, silver shot up a lot more. 
So silver was 8x, whereas gold was 6x, for example, here. And also gold seems, also silver seems to be lagging behind the gold price a bit as well. So I do find this very interesting because, uh, regarding Fresnillo, because they have a lot of silver. So it does make them look attractive. Because if I'm doing a speculative bet anyway, just really a pure gamble on the price of gold going up, then this, then this silver aspect adds like a catalyst for a kind of some even more explosive action should this bet go right. Um, but of course, again, you've got to always remember that you know, with all these uh, gold videos, it really is kind of a an asymmetrical bet where, you know, I'll be risking a small percentage of my portfolio, maybe 2%, which you've got to be prepared to lose all of it, um, but where there could also be fantastic upside. So looking at their profit and loss statements, we see that their revenues, um, a good actually trend of increasing revenues, and obviously the higher gold and silver prices have helped with that. Unfortunately, though, when we go to the cost of sales, we see the cost of sales have been increasing. And when I look at the net income history, it's actually a very bad trend for Fresnillo. You can see a narrowing of the difference between income and expenditure, and you can see the net income dropping. And actually, when we get to my estimates for 2023, we see the net incomes dropped and it's an even narrower difference between income and expenditure. So actually, in terms of their profit and loss statement, they're not looking very good. And uh, I mean, I've based these numbers on their interims for 2023. Um, and if you doubled that up, you'd get a net income of 180 million, which is quite a drop from what we've seen previously. And that's despite higher silver and gold prices in 2023. And then when I went and looked into that in their annual report, I found that this was because Fresnillo suffered from the Mexican government introducing all kinds of new labor laws, meaning that they weren't allowed to hire temps anymore. They'd have to hire permanent staff to work in the mines. So obviously that's um, a debilitating impact there and then even and then unfortunately in 2023 they had increased inflation again plus the mexican peso revalued against the us dollar so here i've got the mexican peso against the us dollar and you see it really has strengthened significantly in 2023 and so unfortunately for fresnillo we seem to have had a series of unfortunate events, which has completely evaporated its profitability. Um, although it still, you know, it still makes enough, but its profitability really has been hit hard. And that does present a bit of a problem because, uh, you know, we don't like, I don't like investing in stock when it's failed with my co cockpit checks. Okay, so in terms of the, uh, assets and actually not that much to talk about um really nothing stands out here to dive into um it's notable they've got a lot of uh, current a lot of cash which is good then on the other side of the book they've also got a lot of debt they've got about the best part of a billion of debt there so that's not so good. And of course, um, they're going to be using this probably to help progress some of their exploration projects. But I suppose overall, racked up against the cash they have, they look okay, to be fair, but not picture perfect, but okay. And their short-term liabilities are kind of um, really a minor uh, component of their overall liabilities. And uh, nothing here to really write home about. So when I look at the visualization that I do, um, it's actually a very attractive visualization. You see how, you know, as with a lot of the gold stocks, 
Uh, they're out of favour for some reason with fund managers for recent years. And you can see that the uh, market cap is now almost kissing the net assets. And they're, in terms of debt um, and their cash, you know, it all looks like a nice profile. And then when I get just their reserves, um, obviously that st stacks up immensely against their market cap. So Fresnillo are the largest precious metals stock on the FTSE and generally their scale is kind of impressive. And what is exciting about them is the fact that they do have some silver really could add some extra spice to the potential upside, the price of gold uh, go up. And the starting point here has got to be you invest in a gold stock that you think that technically the price of gold is going to go up and it's an asymmetrical bet where you can be prepared to lose all of say two percent of your portfolio if you put it in um, but against that there could be really good gains thus making it an asymmetrical bet under that proviso that you're willing to lose everything the silver aspects of uh, Fresillo makes them very exciting. What makes them better than the other FTSE listed stocks is that I think Mexico is a safer place to be doing business than uh, where Centimin and Endeavor operate. But sadly, when I went through and did my checks, unfortunately, we seem to have a sequence of unfortunate events here uh, with inflation going up, them being forced to uh, hire more unionized workers by the Mexican government. And then purely, again, kind of outside their control, the revaluation of the peso in 2023 in combination with further cost inflation. So unfortunately, they've not really passed my cockpit checks, which is a shame because the silver here really could add some fireworks should the uh, gold price go up for and obviously it's for every individual to decide whether this blemish in their balance sheet is kind of worth risking um, against the explosive potential of that silver content so that completes this video i hope you found it useful and i look forward to speaking to you at the next one i do videos like this one just for fun as a hobby it's for entertainment purposes only Always consult a qualified financial advisor before making any investment decision.